Welcome back. After learning how to back up the database, let us focus on how do we recover the database. But before we do anything about the database recovery, what are the causes of the database failure such that we can avoid them if we could, but there is no way we shall avoid the database failures along the way they will happen and we should be ready for them as DBAs. So the first failure that could happen to our database is the instance failure. This happens when there is a mismatch in the system change numbers. You remember the control file and the data file headers. They are being updated by the checkpoint process. Whenever there is a movement of data from the database buffer to the data file, the checkpoint process updates the control file and the data file headers about this movement. Now, this movement is done in what we call the system change numbers or the SCN. With the system change numbers, whenever there is a movement, that movement is given an ID that there was a movement from the database buffer to the data file. And the data, the data file headers must have this ID as well as the control file. When there is a mismatch in those numbers, maybe along the way we are still moving the data and power goes off or something unusual happens or somebody issued a shutdown about you remember it just turns everything it kills everything off so whenever there is this mismatch in the control in the system change numbers on the data file headers and the control file that is when we get what we call the instance failure so how do we recover from this failure you don't need to do you don't need to worry oracle does the work for us so Oracle will perform everything it has to do to bring, to avert the instance failure. And we, we as database administrators, we don't need to worry about that. The only thing we should configure maybe is the MTT error, the mean time to recover. How much time should Oracle take when it is recovering from this loss? It shouldn't be so much time because we don't want our database to be down. Apart from the instance failure, we also have what we call the statement failure. The statement failure happens every now and then, especially if you're using the SQL plus commands and the command line. This happens when we, when Oracle fails to execute the SQL statements that has been supplied, that it has been supplied with. For example, if you're running a command and it fails to run, maybe you are saying select stuff from something, a table doesn't exist or uh, misspelled the table name or the SQL syntax was invalid, we call that the statement failure. Now it could happen when we get problems or challenges with people not knowing the SQL command in case they don't have the right to access an object and they land into errors then that is what we call the statement failure. Let us simulate the statement failure here. We are connected as HR. HR account doesn't have access to this, to this data dictionary the dba users because it belongs to the administrator but this person is not an administrator so when i try to run they say the table doesn't exist this error is what we call the statement failure maybe from employees this is a mistake it should be from but it is intended you can see the from keyword is not found where it is where it is expected all these are what we call the statement fail it how do you recover from that we don't want we don't need to worry oracle perform the work for us but again it may not be from the ignorance of the users or mistakes done with the sql commands it could be from an application error maybe the developers along the way they made a mistake in their in their application and there are some bugs in the system uh, and there are some bugs in the application so we can sit with developers and we fix some of those stuff then apart from the statement failure, we also have what we call the user process failure. You remember the user process, it initiates and maintains connection from the user to the instance. So whenever there is an abrupt disconnection of the user from the instance, we call that the user process failure. Maybe the user was using the application and out and along the way he gets disconnected or his phone blacks out without logging out or they just decide to load the application minus logging out all those calls what we call the user process failure and whenever we face the user process failure or an abrupt disconnection from the instance the oracle activates what we call the process monitor the process monitor is activated you remember those that process 
when we say that its work is to ensure that all the processes are running well and also to clean up the mess that comes out of the abrupt disconnections of the user. This is what we meant. Whenever there is a user process failure, the user disconnection, the abrupt disconnection of the user from the instance, then that is what we call the user process failure and see the process monitor to come into play to deactivate all the services that were allocated to this connection to remove all the server process and then deallocate memory that has been assigned to this connection and then everything is sorted out automatically. Then we also have what we call the network failure. Remember we are having the server in one, at one hand and then the user at the other hand. When we are trying to connect, we must have, we must have a network infrastructure filled with servers, routers, hubs, etc. Now whenever there is a problem with any of the network components or the infrastructure, maybe there is a failure of the server, maybe the fire, the, maybe the cables have a problem, maybe the router got some challenges, that is what we call the network failure. The user cannot connect to the database or to the server, that is what we call the network failure. We can sit with network managers to ensure that this thing is sorted. We can ensure hardware redundancy in case of a loss, in case one had, in case one network component is damaged, you can easily replace it with another and then we continue moving on with our work. That is the network failure. Apart from the network failure, we also have what we call the user error. The user error happens when there is a deliberate or unintentional actions on the data. Somebody deleted data without knowing. Somebody, uh, just imagine somebody deleting a table of records or you delete all the records from the database just because of an invalid where clause. So that is what we call the user error. And indeed, even if we train our users so much on how to connect to the database, how to disconnect, how to avoid uh, user process failure, etc., along the way this may happen because of the stress levels maybe ignorance of the user they don't know that, that these buttons are going to cause disasters these are what we are doing is going to cause some disasters and repercussions so that is when the user error comes in we have some recovery options at our hand we can use what we call the rollback command we can use the flashback queries we can use the flashback tables we're going to say this just in a minute Apart from the user error, finally, we have what we call the media failure. Media failure happens whenever there is a loss of one or more database files. And the database files here are referring to the data file, the control file, and the redo log file. The three files, whenever a problem happens to one of them, then we face what we call a media failure. And we are going to see how we can recover from one or two. We are going to simulate a failure and we see how we can recover from such a failure.